What's up, everybody? <laughs> <laughs> uh, welcome back to I'll Do Yahweh. I'm Lauren. And I'm Tavon. And yeah, we're going to talk about women thou art loose. Yes, but before that, social media plug, follow us They're everywhere. Instagram, TikTok, Etsy. Don't trash me. It's still new on Etsy. Uh, the design. Gosh, not Etsy. Reddit. Uh, Reddit is follow still- us on that. Or subscribe. I don't know how you do on there. But check out our store Etsy. Yeah, 20% yeah. discount. And subscribe to this channel so you could, you know, keep up, man. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah just, I guess. Yeah, it'll just, help us out a lot. Just chill with us, you know, because <laughs> we just have like a lot of different things we want to talk about. <laughs> um, so this is a movie that all the church mothers wanted to go see. Um, I it was if if you're if your mom likes TV Jakes, then this is one of them church mother movies. Like yes. it's, it's serious. I had no idea that. Like it was that serious, but back in the day, it was that serious. Um, so basically, TV Jakes had this. I guess it was like a, um, it was a book. I guess it's a it's a it's a book that he had, and I didn't know what that was. I remember my mom was talking about how she wanted to go to the movies and watch this movie. Like that's how serious it was. Oh. Okay, like yeah. So that's like, <laughs> and I said, what is that? And and even afterwards, it's still like people wanted to you know have like Bible studies and come together and watch this movie. So I did not know nothing about this. All I know I know is that woman down loose. Woo! That's all I ever heard. Woo! Okay, and I said <laughs> I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. So when I saw we were watching Tubi, we were looking on Tubi. I said let me go in the face section because I want, we want to talk about some movies. Yeah, you know, and like get like a little review or whatever, but. Um, so we were just like going through and I said, oh, woman, thou art loose. I, I remember my mom talking about this. Let me go and check it out. Yeah. So I get on there, right? And I said, this movie is a lot. And Tavon was like, we got to take notes. And I was like, yes, we do. So here we go. Yeah, like in the first like <laughs> two minutes, bro, we, I was like, yeah, we got to take notes. Yeah, so th- the whole movie is basically about this woman who um, ends up, oh, wait, let's just let's just talk about this. Spoiler alert, five, <laughs> four, How'd you three, kids do whatever? two. Oh, yes, and, and get your kid out of the room. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so this, these are spoilers right here. So basically, this, this woman is um, like a very abusive past um, and abuse and neglect, basically. And um, she has been in, in, in and out of jail multiple times, like... Um, I think it was like what three? Well, one you got one. You got out. No, it's just two. Yeah. Two. So, um, so she, yeah, so she pr- pretty much went in, in and out of jail. It's pretty much a tell story of a of a, a broken soul, I guess you could say. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just like I guess this woman was going on this journey and she was trying to forgive her past and she could not let it go. Like the whole thing is, is a situation of her not letting everything go. Um, but we were, when we were watching it, we kind of felt like there was a lot of things that were left unanswered and there were a lot of things that um, mm-hmm. weren't a- actually said biblically. Yeah. Um, and it was a, a huge opportunity for T.D. Jakes, who was actually a part of the movie, for him to, you know, actually address some of these situations. And he did not do that. Like, and I don't know what his book is. Like I, like I said, I when I was a child, I, I thought like a child, you know what I'm saying? But like, when I was a child, I knew nothing about this this movie. All I know is that the women were like going crazy over it. So I just wanted to check it out. So um, our notes now, before I start rambling. <laughs> um, so when I first watched the show, um, Kimberly Elise is actually in this movie. So um, my <laughs> first thought on it was, this is Diary of Mad Black Woman, the origin story. Because yeah. when I saw her in there and she was just looking so angry, I said, oh, this is a, this is a kind of your role type of thing. This is what you do, huh? Yeah, it's and, bread and butter. Yeah, it's her bread and butter right there. So I was just like, okay, like that's that's what I was feeling like. Mm-hmm. And I guess you can go into your so, point. So I was saying that T.D. Jakes is not the same person anymore. Because I feel like he like he wasn't well. This is a movie, it's just a short excerpt or a clip or a glimpse of him preaching. Yeah. But I felt like he was, even though he wasn't as grounded in his movie, right? He was, I believe, more grounded then than he is now. Yeah. Because um, it was it was just I was. It's like 
like I said, there was a lot of Bible teaching per se in this movie, but it was it was more it was there more than it is now. And I was thinking like, okay, just how he probably was a humble boy in the beginning. You know, he humble beginnings. He probably, you know, was on. To me, I don't think he's doing what he's supposed to be doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, probably like a lot of these people, like Joel Osteen. Like I don't know their origin story, but probably. <laughs> but like but I can imagine probably they were like, you know, I'm I'm, I'm gonna do this. Mm-hmm. You know, and yeah. then they got I'm really. Gonna do this and this with yeah, and they yeah. got really really good. Big business got in the middle of it. Like, hey, you know, we could really you know yeah. reach you out to the world. Type and possibly, of thing. like, not reading the Bible as much. But you get too busy, you just get too busy. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And, and the thing about it is, it's like, you should never be too busy to open up a crack open that book, as they say. Yeah, because it wasn't even to the end. Because, like, the whole story is, like, it's, it has its main story, but then there's parts of where he's actually preaching in the movie. And mm-hmm. it was, like, wasn't till the end where I, I even heard a mention of the word Jesus, God, or whatever. Wow. A lot of this stuff was typical... I'll say baptism, baptist, baptist, type of test. Like, you know, this oh, is yeah. what you need to do to get what you need to get. It wasn't nothing about salvation, I mean, redemption. Out, throwing, giving money. And yeah. Typical, I would say black stuff. Like, you know, the black church. Unfortunately, yeah. yeah I right. mean, I'm, I'm just like, I thought that church was like bad then or like more um, entertainment then. But now... Like, looking at that movie, I was like, wow, we're way worse than we were. Yeah, man, we're way worse. We're, we're way worse now. And there's more videos. I mean, everybody could capture it on their phone in 4K, so. Yeah. And there's a lot more things that you could do to, you know, mess with people and everything. But go on to your second point. Uh, So my second point was, let me look at the notes. Okay, single motherhood. Um, So basically, um... One thing that was uh, really like a lot in this movie was that I was able to see a little bit of parallels in my life. Um, the um, Kimberly, um, her her um, her character, her mother, basically was, um, and I think her mother was played by uh, what's uh, her name? Loretta Devine. Yeah. So basically, uh, her mom was Loretta Devine and, and 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 whatnot. And so Cassie. Yeah. Or well, she yeah she couldn't call her mom mom. She called her Cassie. And uh, what was Kimberly's name? I don't want to keep using it. I don't Kimberly. know. I can't remember. I don't remember. I can't remember. Oh, my gosh. For I'll look name. it up. Yeah, thank you. But um, basically, so she was, she couldn't call her mom, mom. I was able to call my mom, mom. Okay, that was like, if I ever said something to my mom saying Margaret or something like that, it would have been a problem. Okay. Mm-hmm. We would have been, I would have been pun- like punched. Okay, <laughs> I don't know, but like, <laughs> like no, not for real, not not for whatever, not for that situation. Um, <laughs> but um, but basically, it was single. Like her mom was single. Michelle, that's it, Michelle. So Kimberly was her her name in the in the movie was Michelle. So basically, Michelle could not call her mother mom. Her mom was also um, or Cassie was single, and what. I noticed the whole entire time was because she was single was like, you know, like she would have her her uh, boyfriends come over a lot. And so and we, and we found this out because um, Michelle said, well, hey, um, I have a lot of uncles, don't I? Like, you know, you sure do have a lot of uncles. You know, she said, I want you to because her mom her or well, Cassie was saying, I want you to meet, you know, a, a, your new uncle. Yeah. OK. And she said, well, Dad, I got a whole bunch of uncles. You know, and I never was told to call someone uncle, but um, I know people who were told yeah. to call someone uncle. Like, yeah. So that's a legit thing. Um, and I think that's very, when people put their kids in situations like that, that is so, so confusing. Do not do that to your children. Please don't do that. Do not have, like, this is Mr. So and so, okay? And that is that. Mm-hmm. Okay, do not have him call uncle. Like, like even if it's like a situation where you're not dating a person, like, like for example, um, my aunt was dating someone, and um, basically she was like trying to get. No, she didn't. She didn't say call him uncle. She told, told him call him doctor. But I don't. Either way, I don't. I, my thing is this: this is Mister So and So. Okay, because we're trying to build a relationship, and. The relationship does not need to be based upon thoughts of family. 
Like, you know, I don't even think that he's my family. Because when you marry uncle so-and-so, now I'm confused. Mm-hmm. Because you're not supposed to marry your uncle. Yeah, you ain't supposed to be kissing your uncle. Exactly. So I'm a little confused by that. So Or, or in this case, your brother. Because... Right, right. Yeah, that's her uncle. But your uncle has to be your brother. Yeah, so that's just like, ugh, no. Yep. Don't do that. Stop it. Um, but um, I, <laughs> hold on, I'm, I'm not done. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> um, um, oh, also dangers of dating and not fully knowing who, who you're with. Um, what I noticed in this, and um, like this is like kind of the same type of. The person who she met, her new uncle was Reggie, right? And basically, um, Reggie was just this nasty man who just just kind of preyed on young girls too. He well, he seemed like he preyed on women who were single, is because he came for Cassie, was you know trying to get money from Cassie, talking about you know um, you just pay a few of my bills for a couple weeks, you know, or or so. Then you know, you know, I'll I'll be straight. And she said, "This like oh oh." And she was so desperate. And I, I remember even um, as, a, as a little girl noticing my mother just really, really wanting someone to be with. And yeah. the desperation that it is, it's like, it's sad, but it's understandable because like when you, when you are constantly in a relationship that does not work, like it doesn't work out and you really, I guess women who are, who just are born and they just like, I really want to, I want to be married. I want love and I want this and I want that. Yeah. But they don't know how to achieve it. And so, like, when you get in situations like that and you bring your child into that environment, you're putting your child in danger as well as yourself because all you're constantly thinking about is, I have to have a man. I have to have um, someone to, 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 to spend my life with. I don't want to be lonely. Um, one of the things that she said in the, um, in the movie, that Kathy said in the movie, that really stuck out to me is that she said, you can squeeze a pillow as tightly as you want to, but it'll never squeeze you back. Mm-hmm. And I said, that is so deep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, it is just like, it, it won't, like you can hug it as tight as possible, mm-hmm. but it will never hug you back. And I think that is um, a lot of a, a lot of women's stories when it comes to that, because it's like, it's just, it's a lot, but you have to know who you're dating before you decide to bring that around your child. I, I was thinking more so like um, maybe date the person for a year before you bring them around your child because at least then you know, like have a foundational understanding of who that person is. And then you won't have a, a child, you know, possibly getting raped or mm-hmm. or um, or just some kind of bad interaction. Yeah. You know, because it might not just be about rape. It could be somebody who says something rude to you. I have I had some of my mom's boyfriends say rude things to me. And, you know, I just let it slide off because I was like, I, I need my mom to be happy, you know, and that's what all kids want you to be happy. So you really have to, you know, take that into consideration. Mm-hmm. Your go. Your move. Yeah, mom, mom won't be as one. Um, stereotypical black flamboyant gay man at the barber or the salon. It's like for one, like that's that's it's just always a stereotypical. Why can't you if you're gay? Why can't you just? Or why are they portraying just gay men or only act like this? You know, just mm-hmm. you know, I don't want to say normal because well, I, because people I don't trigger probably triggering people right now. But you know, why can't it's just it's just like yeah. And also, this is a, a Christian movie per se, so you know that could have been a good opportunity to you know if you're gonna have them in there highlight some struggles that that person deals with or whatever, but mm-hmm. um, yeah, just a typical black flamboy gay man just doing hair with his hair braided or I don't know how it was with makeup. And I'm yeah, like, you, yeah. I'm like, yep, this is this is how we're going, going, going this way, huh? Your turn. Whatever, sir. <laughs> okay, so um, my next point was this movie makes the church feel like entertainment slash a joke. And today's churches are even worse. So I already said that a little bit earlier, but um, to elaborate, it was just like a lot of people running around. Um, and basically, um, you had the, the typical women who were like, mm-hmm, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And when they were outside in the real world, they was not praising the Lord, praising the Lord, praising the Lord. Mm-hmm. So um, you even had like, you know, the whole... 
it's like I don't I don't know what it is like, but but um, a lot of these these big pastors have this way of speaking, and it's like and uh ha, ha, and uh and uh and it's like <laughs> yeah, it's that yeah. I don't... I was like, do they go to school and learn that? Like, yeah, like what's AM, going on? AME, Baptists, I don't know. I, I don't know what the purpose is except for to evoke that you're on fire for God and the church eats it up. Well, your song gets throats on fire because like, it's mm-hmm. like a... <laughs> and I'm just like, that's too much for me. I can't. Mm-hmm. And um, it's just a constant situation of everybody just, you know, from, people were actually trying to get into that church. Yeah, Remember? it's been a lie, like, like that was a line, and if yeah. you did, if you were like a member of the church, and like, yeah, it was for a revival. You, you had to sit there and say, "I'm with so and so just to get in." Yeah, I'm with Cassie. Yeah, like it's like, are, is this a club or what we doing? <laughs> and that wasn't long. Oh, mm, okay. Um, so the importance of being equally yoked. Um, so Cassie has Reggie, whatever his name is. Um, they were equally yoked. He, he didn't get his act together to the very end and he got killed like a minute after he gave his life over to Christ. Um, and because if you're equally yoked, you know, you wouldn't be having a lot of these problems. You'll have problems as every couple do, but you, you know, because like for one, she started going to church, Cassie, and you know, and he'll be outside in his car smoking and telling her to come outside. So that's not important to him. You know, it's like you shouldn't rush her. You know, and then he didn't want to come to church and you molesting the, the daughter, you know, mm-hmm. and y'all not on the same page and he's not working. Drove a wedge in that family. Yeah, and it's like, he picking her over me and, you know, he wasn't working at all, you know. And just mooching off of Yeah, mooching, because even the first time we seen him, he was like, hey, you know, I made reservations for this place. She was like, ooh, that's fancy. And then that's when he said, well, you know, um, son of I don't have his wallet or whatever. I need you to pay for yeah. it, basically. So I'm like, like, how are you gonna re- how are you gonna do do a reservation at Ruth's Chris and not pay for it? Let me tell you how that reservation would have been canceled. Yeah, would cancel the book because I'm about paying for that. Well, yeah. So, um, the next one I had was the dangers of being filled with anger and being unforgiven, unforgiving. Um, yeah. Basically, nice people can't get through. There was a moment in time where Michelle was trying to, like Tavon said, um, she was uh, she was going to church and stuff like that, and and she was trying to get herself together. Okay, so the dangers of being filled with anger and being unforgiving. The nice people who try to help you can't get through. So with that point being said, that was a situation where well, when Michelle was going, well, she was there was a situation where Michelle was going to church. Okay, she was trying to get right. She's trying to do the right thing. Right with okay. <laughs> and and um and basically she also um met up with an old friend of hers. Um Todd. I don't remember what his name was. But story. um it was an old friend of hers and she uh was, you know, he was trying to let her know that hey, I'm cool. Well, whatever that stuff that you know you dealt with or whatever, it don't bother me. I like you. And he actually was ma- making it known um that he loved her, you know. Yeah. Um Without saying it to her, but he said it like like they had like a little confessional situation, a little bit like a small little type of thing where it had like a little monologue, you know how he talked about how he always loved her and stuff like that. Yeah. And so basically, he did not care about what she did, um, and 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 what her past was. He just want he just wanted to have her, you know, um, in his life, and she couldn't let that like she couldn't just like let that be something nice. She had to always come at him and say, "You're just trying. You oh, you feel sorry for me. You just not there. Like, oh, you trying to talk down to me. You trying like it's like, girl, nobody cares about you." Yeah. I was like, "Yo, I, I need her to calm all the way down. Take it all the way down. Like I understand that you know, but I understand the whole thing of like not trusting, um, yeah. the guys after what happened to you. I guess I mean, there's some there's certain things I always I told Tavon recently. That's like there's things I prayed that I, that would never happen to me." And that, and one is being like, you know, R A P E. Okay, I do not need that in my life. I don't think I don't know if I would be okay. Like I, I think I'd probably just be like snapped or lost or something. I don't know. I don't know, but I don't ever want to find out. But um, I know that that is really, really hard for people to actually trust men after that. And so I understood that part, but at the same time, it's like you know, 
when you don't forgive and you don't you don't try to work on letting go, right. it causes like the blessings that are right in front of you to just like be pushed. It be it could be pushed back, or um, you're not receptive to the things. You think that nobody's trying to be here for me, and this man's like probably like, dang, I'm right here. Like yeah. I'm right here. He's like, what am I? <laughs> what am I, chop liver? Like, you know, so that's one of the things that was happening that was just really, you know, concerning. Um, and then also at the end when she, when her, when um, her uncle Reggie, it's like, no, but like, you know, when Reggie tried to come over to her and apologize yeah. to her for actually, you know, raping her. Um, he, first of all, I didn't like the fact that he had his arms open like this because like, you don't do this to someone who has been raped, but I don't think he was in his right frame of mind. Yeah, he didn't know. I mean, I wouldn't know. I mean, yes, but you can't like it. Like those are the hands yeah, that he, have hurt me. He ain't thinking about. That. I know he wasn't, but yeah. the thing about it is, is, like she could not take that, and I, I believe that she went right back into a a um a, a, th- a thought process of oh my gosh like this man's coming after me again and so she I think she really snapped I think she turned into a little girl in that moment and she started she shot him mm-hmm. and that's what she started like her anger just got the best of her you could see it all over her face she turned into a different person it's like a whole bunch of you know like all of that so just the dangerous that's that's dangerous yeah. unforgiveness um this one, Lauren kind of talked about it two points ago. Um, I said church is very uh, sensationalized in this movie. They do all the running around, you know, stuff. But um, I, actually, like I said earlier, too, there's no talks of being a sinner or needing God at mm-hmm. all in any of his little sermon excerpts. Mm-hmm. Or there. It's basically all self-help, self-help talk. I had a, we had a podcast episode about self-help, self-help books. Yes. Um, that you should check out and um, you know, all these different teachings and everything. It was mm-hmm. basically like, what can you do? You know, somebody's in your face. You do. I don't know. It's, it's if you've been to a black church, you know. Yeah. Uh, if you haven't, ask somebody. I don't know, or watch it, or just go in there. I don't know, and and you'll see, and, and, it's, and it's totally different. Um, but yeah, it's just sensationalized in the movie, and it, this being a, I guess, labeled as Christian movie. With a well-known pastor, um, there was no, there was no talks or salvation talks or redemption. I guess it was a revival, so you were supposed to come and you know put everything on the, you know, put all your burdens there and turn your life over to Christ. But yeah, um, yeah, it was a very small part. Yeah, and you can tell also that she didn't understand God at all because she was like, I didn't understand why a God would want to forgive him. And I was like, and TV Jakes, you failed to do your part. If she if she was asking that question at the end of the movie, you did you failed to teach her something. You know, you failed. So um my point was everyone who goes to church isn't isn't a Christian. And that is because of the fact that like you you can think that someone is all the way there and all the way in. But we all have we all have our stories in the background, and everybody might think that they're all about that life, and there are people who are just not thinking about the, they're about their life. Yeah. Sometimes people go to churches to get that their their um their bulletin, and so they can sit there and say, "Hey, I have a bulletin. I went to church, and I take a picture with my bulletin every Sunday, so that way everybody, everybody can know that I went to church." But there's like you know, if you haven't seen the movie Left Behind, we should actually talk about Left Behind too. Yeah, um, yeah, that's a staple in. Um, yeah, it's a staple. Yeah, yeah you talking about the end time stuff. Yeah, yeah that's staple. Yeah, so we got to talk about all the Left Behinds and even the new one, and yeah, we have a lot of movies that we're going to watch. So yeah, we'll have to watch those over. Yeah, um, but. Uh, but basically, it's just like in Left Behind, there was one thing where it's like uh, the pastor. Um, mm-hmm. He basically did. He 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 ended up being left behind, being left behind in, in terms of the rapture. And the thing about it is, it's like everybody like he he knew the he said I knew the Bible front and back, you know. So like everybody that you that you see at church might not necessarily be a Christian. You can just be in the church and you and you're trying to figure out your way. Like, I feel like Cassie probably wasn't a Christian. Um, I think she was trying to figure out her way. And um, 
It's just like, it's, it just looks good to do, to, because my thing is she wasn't living like a Christian. Her fruit didn't show Christianity. It didn't show yeah. any of that. It was just like, because my thing is you and people will know by the fruits that you bear. And Cassie wasn't bearing no good fruit. Yeah, at the end of the day. Because going to church once a week is not bearing good fruit. Yeah, because like you were trying to mend your relationship with your daughter. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and all that stuff. Shacking so. up. Um, what else? She uh, she didn't believe her daughter. Yeah. Okay, so she couldn't even see truth, which is bad. Yeah. You know, that's how like, like how far like you've fallen, and you lived your life for a man, like to, to make sure that you had a man. That shows incompleteness. Like it shows like you just feel like you're not complete on this earth without a man in your life, yeah. and. You're supposed to be you're supposed to be whole before you, you know, get with someone else, and hopefully they're whole too. Yeah. But the thing about it is, it's like when I say being whole, doesn't mean being perfect. I mean like being whole, as in you understand that if I don't have someone in my life, it's okay because I have God in my life, and not the looks the cliche thing where uh, Jesus is my husband, <laughs> not that thing, not that. Yeah. But I mean, just like understanding that Jesus is basically like he is, he is your main focus. He is the joy, the love, the happiness in your life. Yep. Yeah. Um. So my last point is, it was actually Lauren wrote down. It was funny because I made a little joke about it. So <laughs> Kat, oh, not Cassie, uh, Michelle, when she's in jail, um, because a lot of the stories being told from like kind of flashbacks. Flashback, yeah. Because T.D. Jakes is visiting her and he's watching her build this popsicle shaped house mm. a house out of popsicles mm. um and all that stuff so i was like <laughs> i was like um basically the house looked like um okay so backstory so kanye west had his listening party like a few months ago and he i think he built a replica of his mom's house so i'll probably put a picture up there somewhere of both things um and it looked kind of like she's building kanye west's house so that was a little funny part. I was like, yo, like she's been in, building that house on the Donda um, listening party. Yeah, he's at a Donda house. Yeah, <laughs> Donda house. So there's this little, little little funny right there. But um, Yeah, to kind of lighten the mood. Yeah, to lighten the mood. But go ahead. Her last point, which is more serious. Okay, so um, my last point, I said women stay trying to convert a man to Christianity, but, but their walk doesn't reflect the light in the darkness. So, yeah. So yeah. women, I noticed in, in my life, they're all about projects. I mean, a woman, like a lot of women like love projects, like love to sit there and just deal with some, like take someone and like, he, he could just be like the biggest bum and they'll, and they'll just take him and they'll just try to make him into a whole new man. And it's just like, but sometimes people don't want to be a whole new man. Yeah. You know, and it's just like she had the uh, like Cassie um, in the movie. She had wasted so many years. I think like twenty, 20 years, years, twenty years of her time trying to make this man into someone, like to make him into a man. And 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 still, even still, even if he didn't get shot in the end, I have to wonder if he was really fully there. Because my thing is that the only reason why he got there, he went to church was because of fear. Yeah, so, I mean, a hey, fear is a good motivator. Fear is a good motivator, but we don't know. We don't know, like, what, you know, you know, yeah. what he would have been doing after that. Because some people, sometimes people have, like, a situation, like, you know how the parable talks about, like, the, 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 the sowing of the seed and what soil, soil it falls on. And it's just, like, my thing is, like, we don't know what seed, what, like, what soil that seed fell on. Because sometimes you can hear the forecord at the church and you say, oh, Right, Jesus. And and then the light is hitting just right. Yes. And so that's because my thing is like that's what a lot of times happens. It's like like music is so powerful, like where it can just make you feel some some type of way that you like, I have to get down to the front. I have to go to the altar. And that's why we have music in church, because we we gotta get y'all down to the altar. Um (laughs) and also, you know, music in heaven and praise and stuff like that. But you know, like the four chord is serious. Enhances the experience, especially that people love to go, you know, when they say, Oh yeah, you know, service was great today. A lot of times because the music was bumping, the band was rocking, they had a ten minute praise break, 
People stomping their yeah. feet, running up and down. Yeah. The pastor's yelling at you, saying cliche things, affirming your beliefs. Talking about, yes. You know, that, that, he's saying stuff like, your boss at your job, that's your Goliath, and you're David, you know, all types of other things. You got to come down. Or that boss could be trying to expose something out of you that you need to change. Well, what, was he, what did TDJ, TDJ say in the movie? Like he said something about clapping in somebody's face. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I was if, they, say, if, they, if, if they say something to you or whatever, just clapping in their face because that means I'm going through something. It's like, what? Like, I'm not, first of all, if you clap in somebody's face, mm, okay. If sister. If you clap in somebody's face, you're just asking to be punched. Yeah, like, or, you are. Clap back. Yeah, like, clap. Oh, we clapping in faces now. <laughs> like, like, you're just asking for it. Yeah. So don't do that. Um, but but that's what they like to do. They like to. But the thing about it is, like she, Cassie did not even reflect mm-hmm. the Christian that she was trying to get Reggie to be. She was constantly going against the word of God. She was sinning the un- entire movie, and yet she wanted him to be a Christian man. But how can that? You know how many mixed signals that is. Like it's like. I'm I'm allowing you to live in my house. I'm allowing you to have sex with me. I'm yeah. allowing you to kick my child out. You know, all these different things. And, and yet, you know, I'm a Christian woman. I go to church every Sunday. This is what people say. There are hypocrites in the church yep. because of the fact that a lot of times Christians will not, they will not take, or people who profess to be Christians will sit there and say, oh, you know, I'll just, you know, I'll just move in with my boyfriend or I'll just go on vacation with my boyfriend, which is another video or podcast. I don't know which one we're yeah, going to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think but, it's, a, it's both going to be a video and podcast. So you got to subscribe, man. So it's a lot of things we want to talk about because it's, it's stuff like that that really cause a problem for the church in, in, in itself because how does anyone come to Christ when you're not being that light? Like if you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing, you know, what was it? What was it? What was it in the Bible said? The, what business does um what business does light have like have with darkness yes. or something like that? Like it's like you can't why why do you continue to stay in the darkness when you have the light? You are able, you know, to yeah. you know, you're able to basically like you're able to see. And this person's still blind, but you're but then you decide that you want to be blind too still. Yeah. Like it, it makes no sense. And that's why you gotta be above reproach, so so the testimony doesn't get, you know, what's going on? Basically, doesn't get messed up. Is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, it doesn't get messed up because my thing is like, then you could have had Reggie maybe in there sooner. Yeah, sooner or and he'd been like, ooh, I can't, I can't. Or maybe you might not have had him in your life for that long, wasting your time and spending all your money, and and, and wouldn't have been angry. Because my thing is this, like. He ruined your family. He ruined he ruined the relationship with you and your daughter. He ruined your daughter's life because she's in jail back back to back. Like like and you still she still didn't even pick up her daughter after she got out of um after she got out of out of, uh, out of jail. So yeah. it's like Yeah. What one, is this? One she didn't pick her up and she told her friend late because her friend couldn't get out in time yes. to get to her. So she had to take a bus, which is fine, but I mean, you would hope that your mom would pick you up from the metro station. Yeah, like something. But that's just like, these are the things that we wanted to discuss about this movie. It just, yeah. it was a little wild just to, for me to just watch that because I'm just like, yo, this is just like, this is just telling me, telling me all the problems, but not giving me solutions. Hmm. Yeah. So I now know there's problems. Great. I already knew that it was, they were in the world. Like there's problems everywhere. But where are the solutions? And um, so if you watch this movie, just know that you're not going to get solutions, but you'll, yeah. you'll, it, you'll be entertained. See, at least with movies like Fireproof, Courageous, you know, and War Room, mm. you know how cheesy they are. Yeah. They at least had a message in there that you could walk or walk away with, you know, whether you use it or not, you know, like a, like a War Room. The message, I mean, with me was basically you just have a time and place that you make a meeting with God and talk. It's very important for you relationships know, and everything. Yeah, so now, I, I, as cheesy as the movie may be, mm. that was the message. Yeah. Fireproof. We know what the message was. But this just seemed like an entertaining, a movie for entertainment. And they say, you know what? We kind of want to get the Christians in here. You know, so we get, you know, basically, it's kind of like Tyler Perry, where you, or as long as, long as you're in the movie at the church, it's fine. Yeah. You know, there's always a church scene. The guy has a redemption or whatever happens. I don't know. Um, 
but yeah guys so that's it like check out the movies on Tubi for free or ask your mama if she has it maybe on VHS Mm -mm. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Some people are like, what's that? Yeah, for the young folks, I know what VHS is. Um, but um, yeah, thanks for listening, watching. Mm-hmm. Um, follow us on Instagram, TikTok. Um, check out the Reddit. Also, check out our Etsy store. Um, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It'll mean a lot, guys. And, you know, leave comments down below on what other movies we should watch. Or mm-hmm. if you just want to discuss this um, movie that we talked about. Um, but yeah, that's it, guys. We'll see y'all later. See ya.